Hi, this is part two. I want to talk to you about when you cross two parents that are heterozygous for the same trait. And let's take bunny rabbit fur. Bunny rabbit fur can either be white or black. Let's just say that as our options. So with bunny rabbit fur, we could have when we have one parent that's heterozygous, they're going to be big W, little W, but they're still going to have white fur. And then the other parent is going to be big W, little W, with white fur. Now when you take the eggs and the sperm, combine them together into a monohybrid cross, these are the possibilities that could happen. So we could either have a homozygous dominant white, we could have heterozygous, big W, little W, and then we have little w, little w in one square. These are little w's. Okay, so what always happens when you cross two heterozygous parents together is that you'll get a one to two to one genotypic ratio, which would be the letters. You'll get a one homozygous dominant, you'll get two heterozygous, and then you'll get one homozygous recessive. So it's a one to two to one ratio. And then, your, geno your phenotypic ratio will always be three to one. Three white fur to one black fur, which is little w, little w. This is just a generalization. There's lots more of examples in your textbook and in your notes. I just wanted to uh, show you really how to fill in the square box. When you're doing a dihybrid cross, which means two traits, I'm not gonna make you do fill in the whole square and figure out a ratio because I know that that can be um, uh, difficult. But what I want you to really know is is that when you cross two parents, let's say that we are looking at hair color and we're looking at eye color. When you cross two parents that are big W, little W, big B, little B, we'd have big W, little W, big B, little B down here, okay? Inside the square, when you cross two traits, a heterozygous for each, from each parent, you're always going to have the ratio inside this box of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. That would be your genotypic ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, okay? And, you know, look in your textbook for this information because it's stated in the notes and in the textbook, but I just want you to remember that because that's something you might need to know for the exam. Um, in co-dominance, co-dominance is like blood type where you would show both expressions. Let's say that um, if you have A blood type, then you're going to have an A and then you're going to have a little I uh, up there. Actually, they're big eyes with an A and then a little I would be your O. And if you're an O blood type, then you're actually little I, little I together with your O. You'd be an O blood type, which means you have no type of um, blood type in there, but um, that would be co-dominance. And then an incomplete dominance, I always think of as in between. If you have a red flower and a white flower, an incomplete dominance is stated um, for that allele, then the heterozygous in between would be a pink flower. So you'd have a red flower and a white flower as your homozygous dominant would be the white flower. Homozygous recessive would be the red flower. And the in-between, the heterozygous would be a pink flower. And that's called incomplete dominance. Those are a lot of the things you need to know for the exam, but make sure to read your exam three review thoroughly. I went over the test a few times and I wrote that exam review at, looking at the exam. So it is very, very helpful. And I hope you enjoy the, these uh, next two videos. I'm gonna get better markers for the next time that I show you something. And um, good luck and email me if you have any questions by late Tuesday night, because Wednesday morning I will check and answer all of your emails. Um, you know, but make sure to get it to me by Tuesday night. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, have a great week.